Well, hello guys, welcome to this new episode of the Volley Talks here in Plot Volleyball page. My name is Alejandro Castillo and I'm uh, broadcasting from Mexico City, the largest city in the world. Uh, well, um, here, today is Friday, July 17th of 2020. This is episode 70, 75. So uh, welcome, Joe. You are a very special guest. You are the 75th uh, Thank you. guest. How are you? How's everything uh, in Texas, in Houston, right? Uh, I'm just outside of Houston. Uh, kind of crazy right now. Uh, of course, the coronavirus is all over the world, but right now it seems to be hitting Houston pretty bad. Houston uh, and Florida, right? I, I, I read yesterday, Florida. It's, it's, Houston, uh, Florida, California, Arizona. I believe those four states are, uh, are, are getting hit pretty bad right now. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, keep uh, stay safe, and well, we will talk about volleyball, the thing we love the most, right? Yes, love volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm very honored to have you here, uh, Joe. Thanks to Laurie Kimura to make this happen. Hello, Laurie, to Los Angeles. Uh, thanks to Laurie. I love working with her. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, last week uh, he was in to have uh, Joe Cavill your show. He's a great, great volleyball personality. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, Joe. So, uh, well, uh, thanks again for being here in the 75th episode of the Volley Talks. It's an honor to have you here. And, uh, well, we will talk about volleyball starting in your beginnings in volleyball. I know that you are a um, retired. Um, uh, serviceman or, or, or uh, what's the current work? Yes, I, I was in the United States Air Force, uh, 20 years in the Air Force from uh, 1979 uh, to 1999. Right, right. And uh, how was your beginnings in volleyball? How did, did you start to, to love this game? Well, I grew up here in Houston, Texas. And when I went into the Air Force, uh, my first assignment was in a place called Misawa, Japan. And when I arrived there in, um, I believe it was October of 1979, uh, I was very active in sports. I've been very active my whole life, but I never played volleyball. My true love was baseball and I loved American football. But when I was in Japan, uh, I was in the gym and two gentlemen were volleying with a volleyball and the ball rolled over towards me. I bent down to pick it up and give it to them. And he asked, would you like to join us? And I said, no, thank you. I don't play volleyball. <laughs> he said, oh, we will teach you. I said, uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> he insisted one more time. So I went over and I gave it a try. And they did an outstanding job in teaching me how to play. And that's been 41 years ago. I've uh, been going strong ever since. So I've had the, uh, the pleasure to, I played for 12 years. I coached for 16 years. And then the full duration, uh, 41 years uh, as a referee. And it's a great, great sport. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, well, in that age, Japan, um, Asia, China, uh, volleyball. Sorry, you were cutting out. I, I didn't hear everything you said. So uh, you were in Japan. So in all that area in Southeast uh, Asia, uh, volleyball is, is, is a real deal. Yes, yes. And you know, back in the 70s, the, the Japanese were still excelling in, in volleyball. Uh, some of the things they did in Japan at that time, uh, we didn't do here in the United States. I found out later uh, as I became more of a student of the game. But uh, I played downtown on a Japanese team uh, in a league. I was the only American that was playing and I learned a lot real quick. Uh, my coach spoke no English, but I had several of my friends who would translate. And uh, let me just say that uh, the way they teach volleyball, at least back then, was totally different than how we teach in the United States. 
uh, I'm not saying it's better, just different. Yes, and at that time, in the back in the 70s, mid 70s, uh, USA wasn't a, a big volleyball player in the world. Correct. Yeah, uh, Doug Bill was here and John Kessel uh, last month, and they told me I, uh, we have a very difficult uh, situation uh, in our beginnings in Dayton, Ohio, uh, because it was very, very small in the United um, States. What, what was your, your shock when you left Japan, arrived to the States again, and, and well, you watched that volleyball it, it was uh, really small in the, in the country? Yes. So I left in, um, let's see, I was there in 1979. I came back to the States in 1981, uh, went to San Antonio, Texas. I still continued to play and referee. Um, I wasn't refereeing as much because the job that I had did not allow me to participate much because I traveled a lot. Uh, we call it TDY, temporary duty but uh, I still stayed connected with the sport. And then from San Antonio, I moved to Las Vegas, Nevada. And when I was in Las Vegas uh, for six years, I picked it up. Um, I became much more involved. I uh, coached our men's team at our base, Nellis Air Force Base. We traveled all over the West Coast. I, I ran leagues for the city of Las Vegas. And this is where I became involved with Paravolley uh, in 1989. I received a phone call from the mayor's office. Uh, I was very surprised because I worked for the city of Las Vegas part-time uh, running volleyball leagues, as well as giving clinics uh, for both players as well as referees. And uh, the mayor's office contacted me and said, we had this uh, competition come into the Las Vegas Hilton and we need a referee and your name uh, came up as highly recommended. <laughs> I go, really? And they said, yes. And I said, uh, okay, would love to. So I, I refereed, it was the world championships for both sitting and standing volleyball. And at the end of the competition, the um, referee commissioner who was Dr. Radu Rosenthal out of Israel. He said that uh, we're very pleased, very happy with your performance and want to know, would you be interested to, to uh, refereeing more uh, with our sport? And I said, ah, I would love to, it was fantastic. So that was in 1989. Uh, and later that year, about four months later, I moved back to Texas and I became a recruiter for the Air Force. And so I didn't hear anything in 1990 nor 91. And then in January, I believe it was in 1992, I received a phone call for the, from the United States Olympic Center. Uh, back then, the way, the way things are arranged these days, it was totally different back then. And as a matter of fact, uh, Paralympic volleyball did not fall under USA Volleyball. It fell under another organization known as uh, DSUSA, Disabled Sports USA, and they're out of Connecticut. But uh, he said, well, we, is this the Joe Campbell who refereed in Las Vegas, 1989? And I said, yes, ma'am, it is. And they said, well, we would love for you to go with our teams. They're going to Barcelona for the Paralympics. Uh, would you be available? And I said, sure. Spain, why not? <laughs> yes, of course. I'd love to go. Yes, and of course. she said, uh, have you been to an international referee course? And I said, no, I have not. And she said, well, you have to go. There's going to be one in April in London. Can you go? And we will take care of everything. All expenses paid. And I'm like, sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so the Air Force is very uh, proactive when you're involved in international competition. And so I spoke with my boss. Uh, they did all the paperwork I needed to have accomplished. And bottom line, I, I went to my course in London 
And then I attended my first Paralympics in Barcelona in 92. And oh, great. It's been going strong ever since. So, right. so uh, let, let, just let me understand something. Uh, you, you went to this uh, Las Vegas uh, tournament of sitting volley by coincidence? Or yeah, exactly. By accident. Uh, you know, they say right place, right time. I don't know if you've heard that term before. Yeah. I was in the right place at the right time and received the phone call uh, because of all of the work I did um, in Las Vegas with volleyball. And uh, I was pretty well, well known and recognized and they gave me the opportunity to do so. So uh, yeah, it's not that way today. Uh, today, you have to be a national referee within USA Volleyball in order to be recognized and to attend an international course. But uh, yeah, people were like, uh, how can you be an international referee when you're not even a junior national USA official? So my story is very, very unique and very different than most referees making it up to the international stage. Oh, right. That, that's great, Joe. Thanks for, for sharing. But uh, before that, before the tournament in Las Vegas, the, uh, did you referee something, right? Some tournaments? Oh, yes. Yes. I refereed a lot of competitions uh, there in Las Vegas. I even hosted competitions that I put together. Uh, it was predominantly military competitions. So I had the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps from uh, Utah, Arizona, California. Um, and then there in Las Vegas, they would come and participate uh, in competitions that are tournaments that I would host. But I, I refereed, I wasn't refereeing collegiate ball in CAA, uh, but I uh, was refereeing high school and then on base there at Nellis Air Force Base where I was stationed. Okay, great. And uh, well, I'm moving forward to Barcelona. Uh, the, those were your first uh, Paralympic Games. How many Paralympics, uh, Paralympic Games did you attend by now? I, I have actually, I have refereed in six Paralympics. And we have one other referee. And I would like to recognize him because he and I have both refereed six. His name is Anton Props from Germany. And <clears throat> our last one together was London in 2012. So for me, between 92 and 2012, uh, I had the honor uh, to referee in six Paralympics and then um, in Rio de Janeiro for uh, Rio 2016, I was there as a jury member because just like in FIVB, we have a mandatory retirement age of 55 uh, for yes, actually whistling the match. So, yeah, Willie Paredes was here last week, so he told yeah. us that. Okay, very good. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is a very important question, uh, Joe, uh, because I, I, I know very, very little about para volley. It's, it is the same to say para volley and say seed in volleyball or is different? What's the difference? Well, when we say para volley and the reason why it's para, para is we're saying parallel with regular volleyball. Right. Uh, You know, before our, our name, we're known as World Paravolley now. Before we were known as World Organization Volleyball for the Disabled, or WOVD. And we changed our name to World Paravolley uh, because an international sport, the IPC, International Paralympic Committee, did not like using the word disabled. We don't like to say that our athletes are disabled. Instead, we say they're physically challenged. And if you've ever watched any high level international competition, uh, oh, anything, be it swimming, track and field, volleyball, sitting volleyball, uh, the determination these athletes have, you know, and the skill level they have is, in my opinion, equal to that of Olympic athlete. It's excellent, it's outstanding. But uh, yeah, so sitting volleyball is an actual discipline. So you have para volley, but then you have sitting volleyball and you have beach para volley. 
So you have beach and you have city as the okay. two of the so disciplines. Par parabola includes indoor and beach. That's correct. Yes. Okay. But is correct to call it sitting volleyball? Call it, say that again, please. It is correct to call it sitting volleyball? Yes, you can say sitting volleyball. Yes. Okay. That is correct. So if you were to ask me, uh, Joe, you referee para volley, what discipline? And I could answer, oh, I only do sitting or I only do beach or I do both. Uh, the uh, Lori, Lori just asked me, she said, oh, did it get canceled? I said, no, we're, we're doing it now. <laughs> She's going to love it. We, we came team. just a little later. <laughs> no problem. Uh, in, it's not like in FIVB where you're either a, a beach referee or an indoor referee. Yeah. Uh, you don't do both. Uh, I, I think years ago you could, but now you cannot. Yeah, it, that, that, ended, that ended in 2008. Oh, was it? Okay. And uh, after Beijing, I guess. Yes. Uh, the, um, for us, because we're still trying to get beach paravolley, uh, or beach as a, a Paralympic event, um, we are not separating officials at this point. So all of our sitting officials, referees who whistle sitting volleyball, if they would like to do uh, beach as well, they will be allowed to do so. And we know that some referees may have a preference somewhere down the road that they maybe they only want to do beach or maybe they only want to do sitting. And that's perfectly fine. But right now they'll have the opportunity to do both. Okay, and uh, in the Olympics there are, or it's the Paralympics, sorry, there are a beach volleyball also or just sitting? No, right now just sitting, only sitting. Okay, uh, no, no for Tokyo, maybe for Paris or, or what? Uh, our, our target is to have it as a Paralympic sport in Los Angeles, 2028. All right. Okay. Per I hope so. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, no, uh, Randy Stoklos and Sinjin Smith, they were here in the show a month and a half ago. And uh, they told us about the, all, the, all the job, the, all the work they have to do mm -hmm. to introduce uh, beach volleyball as an Olympic game, in, yeah. as an Olympic sport in Atlanta in 96. That's correct. I worked the Olympics in 96. Uh, I was actually a scorer timer in the Omni for uh, indoor, I didn't work beach. But yes, okay. I, I remember with beach got its start in 1996 in Atlanta. So you work in the in indoor in Atlanta with Patty Rolf. Patty Rolf told us two yeah. months ago here that he <laughs> was a, a, a line judge. Ah, okay. Yep, I was, a, gold medal match I was a score for timer. Uh-huh. Who was it again? Who? Oh, that's great. Patty, Pat, Patty Rolf. Oh, Patty, yes. Patty Rolf. Yep. Party, yeah. She was a, a land judge. Yes, she was. The gold medal match for women. It was an excellent oh, match. Well, it's it's a it's a very little word. This volley this volleyball world. <laughs> true, that is well, true. Lori Kumur is here. Is writing. Where para volley is working hard to get beach volley beach para volley accepted into the Los Angeles twenty twenty eight Paralympics. Exciting. Yes. And she's going to be very instrumental in that happening, I believe. Uh, she is the chairman of the rules of the game for us, for uh, World Paravalli, for beach, the beach rules. And so I know uh, she'll, uh, she'll have a big task in, in getting everything together. We actually have a set of rules already, but uh, I know that her and her committee will go through the rules and look at everything and if anything needs to be changed. Uh, they'll make that recommendation. Lori Okimura, okay. Well, I hope so. And, uh, well, um, the, um, the Paralympics, uh, when started the Paralympics in Atlanta? When, say that again? When Paralympics? started the Paralympics in Atlanta? No. Oh, no. Uh, Paralympics began, I believe it was in 1980. 
1980, right. I believe was when the first uh, Paralympics started. I'm also on our awards committee. And I know that we, we go back and we're looking at, uh, at one time standing volleyball, indoor standing was also a Paralympic event. I don't know if you're aware of that. So we no, had sitting no, and we had standing, but they were both for men only. And so in Sydney 2000, that was the last Paralympics that uh, indoor standing was a Paralympic event. And right. then in 2004 in Athens is when women's sitting became a Paralympic event. Okay, but, but just one or uh, in any Olympics uh, coincide the, the, the both, the standing and the sitting. Yes, well, in 1980 up to 2000, you would see both. Like when I went to Barcelona in 92, we had both standing and sitting volleyball. We had both. All right. We were actually in the same venue. You, you could sit up in the bleachers, <laughs> look over here and watch sitting or look over here and watch standing. <laughs> All right, that's great. Uh, Clau Vega says, my warmest greetings to Mr. Campbell from Peru. We all remember him with much affection. <laughs> <laughs> Peru did a very good job in hosting the Parapan America Games uh, last year. Uh, we had a great time together. It was a little cold there because uh, when we were there, it was winter for South America, yes. but uh, they did a very nice job and in, 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 uh, all the work that they had to do. And I met some outstanding people uh, working down there. Hey, uh, Joe, and uh, when did the uh, Paravoli started in the Panam Games? Um, in 19, oh, hold on, three, 2003 in, uh, in Argentina, Mar de Plata, Mar de Plata uh, in Argentina. I just happened to be, the, I was the technical delegate for those games. And so, yeah, we were there. And then 07 was in um, Rio de Janeiro. And in 2011, Guadalajara in Mexico. Guadalajara, Mexico, uh -huh. yeah. See? I, ha I have pictures of that. Ah, excellent. And then uh, 11, then 15, Toronto, Toronto, and then 19 in Lima. As you can see, I, I'm not so much involved with Paravoli. So that's why you are here. So you can explain <laughs> to all of us. No problem. No problem. <laughs> uh, we have more messages. Aloria Kimura says, the Paravoli Pan America zone is an important one for beach Paravoli. Lots of countries are really adapting the discipline. That's great. Yes, it is. I know that, uh, let's see, it's been approximately a year and a half ago, I believe, maybe a little bit longer. Our, uh, our beach commissioner was out of uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and he was instrumental in getting a competition of, of standing beach uh, uh, volleyball uh, competition there in Sao Paulo. Uh, I believe they only had three teams, but it was, uh, it was very good because they were very well received. Uh, they got a lot of uh, good publicity about the competition. And even here in USA, I know USA Volleyball is doing an outstanding job in promoting uh, beach uh, para volley to let people know it exists. You know, when I started, I was basically me. There was no one else in the United States because USA Volleyball did not even know we existed because we fell under another uh, DSUSA out of Connecticut. And so it was in 1999, I remember quite vividly, uh, I was in Laval, Canada for a competition and I received a phone call that they, uh, uh, USA Volleyball had accepted, um, at the time we were using the word disabled, uh, disabled sitting uh, as a discipline uh, under under their umbrella, if you will. And I was very happy because I knew that the publicity that they would get, because when you've got an organization that only deals with volleyball, it would be a huge eye opener for people in America to see uh, sitting volleyball. And, you know, as it is today, I know Lori spoke about that our women's team, Team USA, they're number one in the world. Uh, our men's team, I, I, 
I hope I'm not saying this incorrectly. I'm pretty sure they're like number seven or number eight in the world, but I really don't remember their world ranking. But uh, the bottom line, sitting volleyball has come a long ways uh, within USA. We also have uh, a division at our USA Open National Championships every year. And we average about 10 to 12 teams that participate. Uh, it's more of a club. Uh, it's not national teams that come and participate. So anybody can put a team together and come and play. Maybe you can get a team from Mexico and come next year. <laughs> yes, why not? Yeah, we'll be very course. glad. Yeah, I can, yes, We'd love I to can have organize you. that for sure. Yeah. For sure. For Lori sure. can be your coach. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> no, I, I read that last, last year, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jerry Ruscha, DJ Ruscha played sitting volleyball. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Last year. Yes. Yeah, we, we've uh, we've gotten more and more people. And you know, it's it's branched out. I don't know if you've heard of the Invictus Games and the Wounded Warrior Games. Yes, Warrior yes, Games course. are in the United States. Uh, Invictus Games are there. They move to a different country every year. Uh, I've had the opportunity to referee uh, two times Invictus Games. Uh, and it's wonderful to watch these, uh, our past military members uh, get out. And some of them have no volleyball experience. So it's really new and learning how to move with your arms and get to the ball. Uh, because, you know, if, if the amputee is, is a leg or both legs, it's quite different and it's quite challenging but it's very inspirational to watch uh, our service members from all, not just USA, but from all different countries participate in the Invictus Games. Yes, I, I, I have heard a little of that, but returning to, to the US Nationals, uh, anybody can play sitting volleyball? Mm -hmm. Is correct? Sure yeah. Okay. Anybody can play. Okay. And we, when we play, we even uh, we allow teams to play co-ed. So if you want to have three men, three women to make up your team, that's fine. Now we play on the men's height net, which is 1.15 meters high. Women's is 1.05 1. meters. 1.15. 1.15, yeah, for men. Uh huh. For men. And for women. 1.05 women 1.05 so 10 okay. centimeters lower hmm. okay great and uh, the the team is composed for 12 players uh, the six substitutions per set yes. uh, i mean it's, well it's, uh, when we, when we play here in usa as you know usa we have some different rules with volleyball We don't necessarily yes, do. go by FIVB rules. So uh, we don't do the uh, six substitutions. We do 12. It's unlimited right. per position. So, but uh, yeah, would love to have you put the team together and come out and play next year. Yes, yes. Would be awesome. Consider it done. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, we have more, uh, more messages. Vanessa Redes says, hi, Joe Campbell. Okay. Vanessa Redis. Hello, Vanessa. Vanessa is our communications officer in the zone uh, for Paravalli Pan America. She lives in just, well, she lives in uh, Paraná, uh, Brazil. Right. Uh, Cristiana Figueira says, my president is the best. <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, Chris is our technical official, also known as our sport director, and she lives in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, mm -hmm. She was actually, she was the sport manager for both the Olympics and Paralympics uh, in Rio 2016. Oh, so right. she, she really had a, a full plate of staying very busy in working both Olympics and Paralympics as a sport manager. But she's... She's doing a good job for us. And I know I know also that Jeremy Ruche, who will be here in the show on Wednesday, next Wednesday, Jeremy Ruche will be here. He uh, will uh, ending the, the beach volleyball Olympics. He 
he came back to he go he went back to California two weeks and then he returned to Rio for Paralympics, right? Mm. Uh, yes, I believe so. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Laura Kimura says Angel City Games added seating volleyball in ninety in twenty nineteen. Next week's virtual games will feature U.S. Paralympic gold medalist Laura Webster Bergilini and Nikki Nieves, along with U.S. men's national team members Nick Dadgostar and John Kramer. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> That will be excellent. And Nikki, uh, you mentioned Nikki Nieves. Nieves. Uh, she is now our athlete rep for the Pan America Zone. So she is now on the board of directors within uh, Pan America Zone. Great. Uh, Carlos Ortiz says, greetings from Colombia. <laughs> Hola, Carlos. Carlos is one of our referees right now. He is the only certified referee uh, to whistle sitting volleyball from Colombia. I had the opportunity to visit Colombia, uh, Cartagena, back in December. And I watched the national competition they had. Very, very good competition. Not to mention, I had a, a wonderful time. The hospitality was outstanding. And uh, got to uh, meet some other referees from Colombia. Uh, but right now, Carlos is the only one that's certified with World Para Volley. So. Well, and coffee and food are great in Cartagena. <laughs> True. <laughs> so Did you agree? True. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Excelente. <laughs> uh, Bete, another message. Bete Leal, greetings from Brazil and gratitude for the opportunity to work together at many events. And Bete Leal, she, uh, she's an outstanding scorer. Uh, I had the opportunity, uh, her and another friend, uh, Vanessa Custodio, They were able to come to uh, Lima and work in the Parapanam Games um, uh, last year. Actually, uh, Bet she came over and did some training. She trained some of the scores because we're not using electronic scoring right now like FIVB. We're still using the score sheet. And there's a few modifications because of we have to put uh, the players, they're either uh, VS1 or VS2. Um, it's based on their disability. It's a classification right. is what it's called. And so the scorer has to track when there's a substitution. So you can only have one VS2 uh, on the court at any time. You cannot have more than that. And they track to make sure when there's a sub that it's legal. All But right. She, uh, she went over, uh, did some training uh, before the games, and then some more training once we arrived just before the games began. And so my hat's off to her. She did a fantastic job in training the scores. And we had no problems during the game with scoring. And that's excellent. <laughs> Makes my job I much easier. <laughs> uh, Vanessa Custodio Rani says hi. Uh -huh. <laughs> Vanessa Custodio. Oi, oi, Vanessa, how are you? <laughs> so yes, she she was the other one that went and participated in Lima and um, did a great job. Excellent job as a score. Uh, how many countries did participate in Lima last year, uh, Joe? Uh, in sitting volleyball, we had six. Yeah, six for men and four for women. And the champions were? Uh, for men, the champions were Brazil. Uh, gold medal match was Brazil, USA. And then for women, the gold medal match was Brazil, USA. And um, uh, USA won. But since USA, I don't know if you're aware, in Para Pan Ams, that is the qualification to go to the Paralympics. So that was a qualifier to go to Tokyo. Now, because Team USA already had a, a, um, a ticket, if you will, to go because of world championships, then it went down to Brazil. So Brazil, even though they were the silver medalist, they earned the uh, slot to go to Tokyo. 
So right now for Tokyo, Brazil men, Brazil women are going and USA women are going. Um, Canada women has earned a right to go because we had a competition in February up in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. I believe Lori told you about this competition. Yes. And so Canada, they won that competition. So they, uh, they earned a spot to participate. And unfortunately in March, we had a competition scheduled for the men uh, in Oklahoma and it got canceled because of coronavirus. So we're still looking at having one more competition. It's a qualifier uh, for the men to get the number eight uh, slot to go to Tokyo. And so Canada men, USA men, and many teams from Europe are, will be participating to try to get that number eight slot. How many teams does participate in the Paralympics? Also 12, like indoor? Eight. No, eight. We'll have eight men, eight, eight women. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. great. And uh, I, again, I, 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 don't, I know very, very little about para volley. That's because, that, that's the reason you're here. <laughs> the, the ball is the same. Um, the, the, the measures of the court. The dimensions of the court, uh, yeah, it's different. It's six meters by 10 meters. And the six attack. Six by 10. Uh huh. Six by ten, whereas you know a regular volleyball is nine by eighteen, but yeah. ours is six by ten meters, and our attack line is two meters, not three meters. Attack line, okay. But uh, the the tactics, if you will, of playing the game, it's the same as able body. It's the same. Uh, you know, the setter do a quick a quick shoot to the middle, to the outside, back set, whatever. We have back row attackers, you know, hitting from the back row. So the only thing that's different, we have one signal that's different. It is called lifting. And it's like, I don't, let me get back. A little, it looks like this. Uh, we, don't, we don't teach our referees to move both hands. It's only the top hand. So you'd say like, this is the floor and this is the buttocks that lifted off the floor. And that's how this signal is supposed to be shown. But uh, by rule, uh, an athlete or a player cannot completely lift their buttocks off the floor when they're attacking, when they're blocking, right. and when they're serving. At least one part of the body has to be in touch with the current. Yeah, well, we say at least one part of the upper torso. So from the buttocks wow. up to the shoulders has to be touching when you're doing it. Now, when you're making a defensive move playing the ball, so the other team attacks the ball and you lunge to play the ball, you can leave the court completely. Right. And... We've had some discussions. As a matter of fact, the rule has changed a little bit in that. Uh, you can actually, we allow more, more freely to let the game to play. Uh, loss of contact of the court. As long as the ball is partially below the height of the net, it's perfectly fine going out making the lunge. Uh, so... We don't, you're not allowed to like a double leg amputee. You cannot get up and walk uh, to go to get to a ball that's being played. That's disallowed. So, you know, they teach them to pretty much scoot. Uh, and if they have one leg, they'll use one leg to push as well as their arms. All right, I understand. Uh, but it's, uh, it's amazing to watch the high level, high level competition, how quick how very quick the ball is played and you have to be ready, even as a line judge. And when we brief line judges at the international level, we'll let them know if you've never uh, done line judge on a high level sitting volleyball, be ready <laughs> because it's fast. All right. And the ball is the same? Yes, same ball. But we don't, uh, we use the Baden. At the baden. Uh, ah, baden. Molten. Oh, wow. Molten. We use molten. <laughs> yeah. 
No. Molten in the in the Olympics. Yes. In the Paralympics. Molten Molten is our official sponsor. Okay. And another question. Uh, are you in some way attached to both USA Volleyball and FIVP or is another governing body? No. Uh, World Para Volley is its own uh, international federation. We call it right. IF, International Federation. Right. Now, we, we communicate routinely with uh, FIVB. And I know that FIVB talks about sitting volleyball when they have some of their meetings and some of their trainings. Um, I read something here lately that I believe an MOU, Memorandum, Memorandum of Understanding, uh, was put together, but I, I haven't read everything, so I, I, I'm not going to discuss it. I don't know what I was involved, but uh, we always uh, like to have a very good conversation with FIVB because, you know, they can help us to grow the sport very much, and we're very thankful for everything they do to help and assist us. Yeah, and Joe, uh, which teams uh, are considered the, the strongest? in the history of, of Parabolli? In men's, I, I would say the, the top two teams in sitting uh, men's would be Iran and yeah. Bosnia. Bosnia, Bosnia. Herzegovina, yeah. And for women's, uh, ever since women's has started, it's, it's pretty much been China, USA, Uh, China won, let's see, 04, 8, and 12. So three Paralympics, China uh, were the gold medalists. It was only in Rio that USA, uh, finally, they defeated them uh, in the gold medal match. But uh, I know when women's uh, sitting volleyball first started in 2004, you also had uh, the Netherlands had a very strong team. The, their women's team was very good. Uh, the Slovenia had a good team. I'm trying to remember who else. Uh, some Euro European teams uh, that were very strong with their women's competition. And then, of course, and, China just dominated everyone pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and well, in the men's side, uh, which is the uh, or what? What do you think are the reasons are Iran and Bosnia are so strong in in sitting volleyball? Today, I don't know if this is true because I haven't really spoken with the coaches too much, but I can speak back in, uh, in the 90s that uh, before a major competition, those players would literally play together probably six months to one year before the, the made like the Paralympics or before world championships. And so that was pretty much their job. Uh, they, they brought them together. It'd be like at a training camp for six months and you don't go home. You stay there. And so, you know, every day, every day, every day, that kind of training and many other countries around the world, uh, they just can't do that. But uh, other countries around the world have really improved and gotten smarter on how to play the game, the techniques and everything. Uh, and so It's, I won't say the other countries are as strong as Iran and Bosnia because those two teams are still very, very strong. Uh, and in Rio, they were one and two. Uh, Iran was gold and Bosnia was silver medalist. Uh, but I, I have to speak up about Brazil. Um, I wish I could remember what world championships it was. And unfortunately, I forgot, but Uh, Brazil men's team really has uh, upped their game. Um, wow, I want to say it was in Poland before Rio. I, I'm pretty sure that's correct. So that would have been in 2014. Um, and they upset, uh, who was it, Iran? I think it was Iran they upset. And everybody was just like, wow, it's amazing, astonishing. Uh, that they did so well. So Brazil has really picked up their game in the, the, the men's team and done very well. All right. And uh, uh, talking about the World Championships is also every, every four years? That's correct. 
So our next one will be in 2022. Uh, right now, we don't know where that's going to be held, but uh, as long as this virus isn't still going on <laughs> at that time, I pray it's not, uh, the plans are in 2022 will be our next world championships. Right. And I know that I'm aware that in the USA, uh, Oklahoma is a, they host the program, right? That's yes. Correct. Their official training uh, facility is at UCO, Universal, uh, University of Central Oklahoma. So this is the official training site for both men and women uh, with sitting volleyball. And we actually had our, uh, in 2010, so 10 years ago, we held at the time the largest world championships ever. I think we had 32 teams, 31 or 32 teams attend. In the US? Um, it, it was in the USA. It was at UCO is where we held it. Uh, and it was, uh, it was amazing, <laughs> big, imagine. big competition. So um, Joe, um, how, how involved or how, the, how developed is uh, Paravoli in Mexico? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, that's a very good question. I will say this, I know it's being played. I've actually had a young man who contacted me about a year ago and was telling me that uh, he's a player. He spoke very good English. Uh, he, re he got my information off of our website and he, he called me. And we had a conversation and he's, you know, he told me we're playing city volleyball here in Mexico and we, we hope to join. They're not members right now of World Pearl Volley. Uh, and just like if you wanted to play an FIVB, you have to be a member of FIVB. The same is true with World Pearl Volley. If a country wants to play in our competitions, uh, they must be a member. But uh, the only time I've seen Mexico was in Toronto in 2015. They had a team and they participated. Um, they weren't real strong, but they weren't real weak either. They, they played a decent, decent competition but I haven't seen them since 2015. So I honestly, I don't know the skill level. I don't know how well, I don't even know where they train or where they play. Uh, but I do know that uh, Mexico does have uh, sitting volleyball being played. Okay, well, I, I will, I will, uh, I will dig in that. Uh, and I, I know that there is a National Paralympic Center here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the the volleyball trains here, but uh, you know it's not so not so regular, you know, not so regular basis. But I will I, I will dig in that. Ah, thank you. We would love to see them come back and participate. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we are a country of 130 million people, <laughs> so I think I think we, we can arrange a team. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Okay, I, I will let you know. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, you, you will hear from me about that matter. Trust me. Very good. Uh, well, uh, Joe, are you still involved in the indoor volleyball or, or, or not anymore? Just the para volley? Yes, uh, I still. Uh, I'm still a USA national referee with USA Volleyball. I still referee uh, regular indoor volleyball. I go to some of our co um, competitions. I, I'm normally a head referee at many competitions here in Texas. Uh, I, I have also been a head referee at some of our junior national qualification competitions for about 18 years. Um, and then I'm still involved with high school officiating. Uh, I don't referee myself, but I help do training for officials in the state of Texas, as well as in uh, Houston. Okay, well, I also can I expect to, to join you there in some competitions. I oh. refereed uh, a lot in the last 30 years. <laughs> so yes, I love that. Uh, Patty Roth told me, hey, you wanna came next year for national? So be my guest, I'll be there. Yeah, sounds great. Oh, sure. I think you'll love it. <laughs> 
Yes, yes, yes. Um, Joe, uh, anything else uh, you can? Ah, we will go to the with the pictures. Okay, or did you uh -oh. agree? Okay, <laughs> sure. I was Then, wondering where those pictures were. <laughs> no, they are here. Just okay. give me one one second. Very, very, very interesting uh, pictures. Mm, Joe Kendall. Uh, okay. Lori, are you still there? <sighs> okay, they're opening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just one second, Joe. No problem. Uh oh here we go okay and now share screen ah how, how about this yeah this is my son and my daughter As I told you, I taught Air Force uh, Junior ROTC uh, high school for 18 years. I just retired last year. And so this was the one year. Uh, my son, he was a uh, 12th grade and my daughter was in ninth grade. And so we had a photo taken together. Great. This was the Youth Para Pan America Games down in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 2017. And uh, this photo here is all of our NTOs, national technical officials. So line judges and scores uh, are, are in this photo. I also took one with the referees, but I couldn't find that photo to send you, so I apologize. <laughs> Lori Kimura says, yes, I'm here. Okay, that's perfect, oh, okay, Lori. good. She, she's not gone. Mm. Oh, and there's Miss Lori. So Lori this Kimura. is... Yep, yeah, this is Lori. Uh, this was a Parapan M Games. Or I was the technical delegate. Lori was our media delegate. And this is Chris, who we talked earlier. Um, and she's from uh, Rio de Janeiro. She was the assistant technical delegate uh, during this competition. This was when I made my uh, second visit to Lima to do my uh, inspection, because as the technical delegate, you go down and you do an inspection, you meet with all the departments. And they were showing me the plans for the new stadium that was going to be built for both volleyball and para volley. Uh, volleyball for the Pan Am Games, uh, they used the same venue uh, that we used. Okay. This was a photo, that's an old one, but that's when I was refereeing high school volleyball. That photo's probably about 10 years old. <laughs> Here's uh, London, this is Anton. This is the gentleman I was telling you about earlier that he and I both have refereed in six Paralympics. From Germany, right? You're from Germany, that's correct. And the young lady that's with us is Dora. She's one of our medical classifiers. Uh, she's originally from Hungary, but she lives in Germany right now. And uh, all of the referees signed the two volleyballs that they gave us as a gift. Matter of fact, it's uh, up on the wall here somewhere. Wow. You can see behind me. Uh, it was one of them that I had received. Uh, it was a beautiful gift to receive from that competition. And for, for Olympics, you use uh, Mikasa? We were. This was before we had uh, Molten as our official ball. Right. That was the last uh, Paralympics that uh, Mikasa was our official ball. After that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in Rio de Janeiro, we had uh, Molten. Hey, Cristiana Figueira says, hey, I'm here. Christian. Ah, good. I don't know 
Uh, I think you may know the gentleman on the left. Do you know who that is in the red is, shirt? Is Dan Paul? That's Dan A. Paul. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably know that unfortunately we lost him. Yes, uh, I know. Now, I think it's been three or four years ago now. Time goes no, so quickly. I think I think two, uh, two max. Two years, okay. But uh, very devastating when we lost Dan. But Dan was one of our referees. As you know, he was an FIVB beach referee. Yes, I know. Uh, and he, he worked uh, in 2016 and real as a beach referee on the Olympics. And he also refereed the Paralympics uh, oh, as well uh, with sitting volleyball. And do you know the gentleman in the middle? Um, from Brazil, uh, middle blocker. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Amori, can... Amori Ribeiro. Amori? Amori, yes. Okay. And Amaury was the head coach for the Brazil men's sitting volleyball team for a number of years. Now, I believe he is in Italy and he's coaching, uh, helping the Italian uh, sitting volleyball program. But this competition here was in a city known as uh, Mogi das Cruz uh, in 2011. Um, I know you're not aware of this, but uh, the Parapan America Games Uh, in 2011, when it was in Guadalajara, they only had for men, not women. So we had to have a competition for women in order to qualify to go to London. And so uh, Brazil hosted the competition. And so this was a women's competition that we held. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that uh, that April death was a tragic news for all of you. Yeah. Yes. This was when I was a probably 20 pounds lighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the rest with the white pants, with the white yeah. uh, trousers, I didn't like never. Yeah, I never know. liked that. It was so difficult. This was actually in Barcelona. This was in 1992, my first Paralympics. And we, uh, you probably can see that we are, have different badges. Yeah. Because back then, we did not have a standard badge. So every referee wore the badge from their home country. And that's what we did. Uh, I, I believe that's the only one because in uh, 96 in Atlanta, I think we had uh, a standard badge. Uh, for what, uh, Actually it was WOVD then. Well, I don't know if you are aware, but in, the, in Barcelona Olympics, the, ref, the first referee for the gold medal match, uh, for the men's gold medal match, It's a Mexican, my master, Genaro Redondo. Oh, excellent. No, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the, the, first, the first referee for the gold medal match. Congratulations. This was in uh, Port Said, uh, Egypt, and I just had knee surgery. <laughs> and I so can when, see that. <laughs> when I arrived, everyone was very surprised because I said nothing to, to anyone. The gentleman I'm with, Peter Konchnik, a very, very high level FIVB referee when he was still active. Um, he retired uh, probably four, maybe five years before I did. I, I don't remember his actual retirement year, but an excellent FIVB referee, uh, Peter uh, Konchnik from uh, Slovenia. And he was also one of our referees in sitting volleyball And now he is one of our referee observers. Uh, and he, he helps to observe referees and give them feedback. Joe, uh, how many countries did you visit uh, doing uh, Paravoli? <laughs> Actually, uh, I counted, I'm around 28. 28? Yes. Wow. But I can say volleyball has been very, very good to me. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> and here we are in Beijing. And this was actually the bronze medal match between uh, Egypt and Russia. Very good match. Five sets and Russia won. Uh, the, the protocol is almost the same mm -hmm. as indoor. Yes. 
So uh, as you can tell where I'm standing, I was the second referee. Yes, yes, in the other room, yep. right. Correct. And it's um, the best of five also? Correct, yes. Okay. 25 points, mm -hmm. uh, tie break uh, to 15, or it's the Cor same? Yep, same correct. Format. Everything's the same. As you can see, I don't know almost nothing about uh, city volleyball. That's why you're here. <laughs> you're learning more and more. <laughs> a lot. Trust me, a lot. The bird's nest in Beijing. Uh, the gentleman that's standing next to me, that's our president, Barry Kuzner from Australia. He was the competition manager or the sport manager for the Paralympics in Sydney in 2000. Uh, he is still currently our president. And the, uh, the young man that's standing behind me that's kind of looking over my shoulder, uh, he is actually uh, from Canada, Saro Kirastician. And he is our um, medical, our chief medical classifier for the zone. Right. Uh, Joe, did you know uh, Nicole Ban? Nicole. From Canada? Nicole oh, yes, Ban. yes, yes. She will be here uh, in almost 10 days. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I spoke yesterday with uh, Jackie Skender, the mm -hmm. communications director from Volleyball Canada. And we arranged that. And she she's now in... She's now away. I think she's hiking right now, Nicole, something wow. like that. But uh -huh. um, she will be here in almost 10 days. How Excellent. do you, how you can be here also? <laughs> yeah, she's the head coach of the women's team. Yeah. And she's, she's really taken that team a long way. So it's very nice to watch the team progress and play as well as they're playing. This is the board of directors for World Pearl Volley. Uh, you see John Kessel. I know you, yes. you know him. The master of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is a development director for World Para Volley. And, uh, but yeah, this was our meeting we had in the Netherlands. This was in, I think, 2018. Right. I don't know if you know this gentleman. No, I, I, I don't. Olympic gold medalist, Bart Connor, gymnast. Okay. From USA. Okay. Okay. Uh, I wish I could remember which Olympics. I don't. But this was in uh, 2010 when we had the uh, World Championships in Oklahoma. That we're standing in the gym right here, getting ready for the opening ceremonies. And, and Bart Connor is from Oklahoma. No, uh, but he was the MC uh, right. for the uh, opening ceremonies. Right. Actually, I, I don't know where he lives, uh, and maybe he does live in Oklahoma, but he was the MC for the event, uh, opening ceremonies, and I, I got a chance to speak with him and had right. a very good conversation. He's Guadalajara. Ah, Guadalajara, yes. So there's, this is the referees, as well as the referee delegate, technical delegate, uh, and then you can see we had a different shirt. Uh, we've gone through about four or five different referee shirts uh, since since I started in 92. And no Mexican referees, right? No, we don't have any. Even for this event, we didn't have any. Now the referee, uh, you see me standing on the left? Yeah. The referee standing next to me, he's from Cuba. Oh, yeah. And he's the only referee uh, from Cuba that's uh, certified. Uh, Raul, I, sorry, I don't remember his last name. First name was Raul. But um, I think he has since uh, stopped refereeing because I haven't seen him in, well, since 2011. That's the last time I've seen him. Uh, how many uh, certified referees uh, are in Norseca area? I think we have now... 12 or 13 because we have one we have one retiring from Brazil this year Mr. Ronaldo Chavez from Rio de Janeiro he's actually the referee commissioner of the zone and Mr. Tim Harlow from USA uh, they both re retire this year uh, I think 12 if I'm not mistaken but 12 in the whole Americas or just in Norseca uh, in the whole Americas all of Para Pan America. Yes. Or okay. Pan America. So, so from Canada to Argentina. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, because uh, you are not attached to Norseka, right? Correct. We're not. I, I have to. I have to to be. Um, um, I have to understand that very well. Yeah, you know, and I, I've spoken with uh, Cristobal from the Dominican Republic because yeah, I, I understand it. Dominican Republic that they're playing sitting volleyball, but uh, we have we have not seen them yet. So I'm hoping soon that we will see them come out and participate. Okay. Well, N Nelson Ramirez is, is, is in, the, in the room. Mm. Nelson Ramirez is the director of the Regional Development Center for Volleyball in Dominican. Excellent. Uh, do, you, do you know, Joe, that, that this venue who was built specifically for volleyball, it doesn't exist anymore for volleyball? Oh, wow, really? No, it was uh, transformed, I think, in the in a basketball center, no mm. more volleyball. It was a very beautiful facility. I know that, but uh, it doesn't work for volleyball anymore. Wow, it's a shame. Yes. Uh, this one, this was uh, 2014. I think this was in uh, Poland. Uh, either Intercontinental Cup or World Championships, I don't remember which. Uh, three referees standing up in the back. Uh, myself, I was a jury, uh, no, yes, I was a jury member. And then this is Mr. Pierre Farmer at the computer. He's actually the secretary of the Volleyball Referee Commission. He's out of uh, Canada. This was our, in NG China. Uh, Intercontinental Cup. Matter of fact, this was the, I want, I believe the first competition Lori and I worked together, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she was a jury member, so was I during this event. And so the first day of competition, when we came to the venue, we just arrived and we had all of these guys out playing these drums. Man, it sounded phenomenal. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah. Uh, this is in Canada, uh, per, um, Zonal Championships in Montreal 2017. And this was the uh, medical classifiers as well as the staff. I was the technical delegate for this competition also. And you see uh, Chris, she's holding the volleyball. And John Castle again. John Castle, yes. The referee I told you that's retiring from Brazil, he's our referee commissioner. Uh, this is the tall, tall gentleman in the back, Ronaldo right. Chavez. All right. Yeah, wow. Hey, uh, nice shirt. It's the same uh, you are wearing. This is, I actually had these shirts uh, created uh, before Toronto in 2015. And they are actually for the board of directors for Pan America Zone. So uh, it's kind of unique, different. Nobody else has them because they were made just uh, for, for the Pan America zone. And uh, I, I give them, when we have a new board member come on board, uh, they get one of these shirts. So okay, very, very nice shirt, by the way. Thank you. This was when I was in Japan in uh, December, 2016, uh, Dennis Labrelli who at the time was our sport director for World Paravolley, he and I went over and we administered a uh, referee course. As a matter of fact, uh, Carlos Conde, who you said earlier from Colombia, this was his course where he attended. So that's where I met him for the first time. But the two gentlemen here uh, talk, the gentleman on uh, the left as we're looking at the photo, He's pretty high up with the uh, local organizing committee for Tokyo 2020. And then the gentleman on the right, as we're looking at the photo, uh, I can't even remember his name now, but he's the head coach of the women's sitting volleyball team. Very funny guy. Uh, they're both great, great individuals. Um, and it was so good to, to see them while we were there during the course. Matter of fact, we even got a chance. Uh, talk took us over to the venue where sitting volleyball is going to be held during Tokyo. Uh, I know we still call it 2020, even though it's going to be in 2021. But 
we got a chance to look at the venue. And there's Mr. Kessel uh, being all relaxed. Of course, this was in Rio 2016. Uh, John and I worked many, many matches together as jury members. Uh, and then, like I said, Dan, I mentioned earlier, Dan A. Paul was there as a referee. So uh, they said, uh, the person who took the photo said, I need to get a photo of uh, three Americans. Do you know any Americans around here? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the three of us got together and they took this photo. Well, uh, Carlos Ortiz says, uh, yeah, it's, it was my international course and Joe, my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> he did a great job. That's it. Good. That's all the, all the pictures. Very nice pictures, John. Thanks Thank a lot. My Thanks pleasure. for sharing. My pleasure. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I am missing something with uh, para volley, with sitting volleyball. You're missing something? Uh, it's a question for oh, you. Oh. Am I missing something else to know? No. To learn? I, th I think you've, uh, you've heard enough for one night. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor to uh, to come on your your webcast and and get to discuss about a little bit about my life, but more importantly about sitting volleyball and uh, how wonderful this sport is. And you know, it gives athletes an opportunity to participate at the international level and have the same dignity and honor and respect that we give our Olympic athletes. And so it's. Uh, it's very humbling for me to be a part of this. Uh, the only thing I'll share with you is that uh, I was the referee commissioner in the zone for a number of years. And then when unfortunately our president had to step down due to health reasons, I was asked to be the president. I didn't want it. <laughs> I enjoyed being the referee commissioner. Uh, matter of fact, he had to ask me three times before I, uh, okay, I'll do it. So I have, I've been the president since 2013. And I set some goals for myself and it's so good to watch these goals coming true. Um, when I started, it was just me. Now I have 13 people on the board uh, for the Pan America Zone, which is outstanding. And uh, they're all doing an outstanding job. Uh, my other goal was to get at least 15 countries playing sitting volleyball for World Pearl Volley. Well, we're about to be up to number 12 or 13, so we're getting there, and this is great. So, uh, like I said, I'm very honored. It's been a, been a great, great uh, ride for 41 years, thanks to this wonderful sport. And uh, I'm hoping they'll let me stick around for some more years because I'm still having a great time. Oh yes, I, I I I can see it, and well, trust me, I will do whatever I can to to help develop the probably here in Mexico. It's difficult because a lot of reasons, yeah. but I think yeah, I think it's possible, of course. Thank you so much. Any help will be welcome. <laughs> no, so uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, as I told you, you are the or, well. This is the seventy fifth uh, episode. It was oh. a great, great episode. It was a great uh, manner to, to to reach 75 episodes. So thanks a lot, Joe. It's, uh, it was amazing to know you. It was amazing to, to hear all your, your stories and all about the, the, the new knowledge for me about Paraboli. I, I knew fun. almost nothing about Paraboli. <laughs> well, hopefully uh, you'll get to come watch it sometime and or participate in play. Uh, yes, yes, maybe, why not? Yeah, if you've never played, you're never. in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, all right. It has been a pleasure, Joe. Thanks for all the people who watch us to, to and uh, listen to us. Uh, people from South America, from Brazil, from Colombia, Lori, of course, from USA, people from Mexico who also attended. Thanks, thanks a lot. Please uh, interact with this, uh, with this webcast. Uh, do uh, give like and share so other people can watch the, the this interesting uh, talk. It's not an interview; it's a talk with yeah. friends. So this uh, interesting uh, talk with uh, Joe. Uh, 
Thanks a lot. Uh, Matias Castro says has uh, greetings from Sinaloa, Mexico. Okay. Hello, mm. Matias. Very nice food. The, the, the best seafood in the world is in Sinaloa, trust me. Oh, really? The best seafood in the world. Excellent. I need to go. Do you like a seafood? <laughs> I love seafood. Uh, Joe, what's, uh, what's your favorite Mexican food? And I have to tell you that <laughs> Chipotle and Taco Bell are not Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like I told you in the beginning, I would go to Mexico with my mama. Uh, and so I would get to eat some real authentic Mexican food where the, the little village we stayed at, they would go and get a small goat, kill the goat and cook right there over the open, open fire. Uh, you don't use a fork, you don't use a spoon, you only use tortillas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was delicious. Of course, here in, in uh, Texas, we have what's called Tex-Mex, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, I, I eat uh, regularly, too much. I hope that in Guadalajara, you, that you stated some uh, some great Mexican food uh -huh. in Guadalajara. Oh, in Guadalajara, yes. Tortas, yes. Did you try tor tortas ahogadas? No, I did not. Uh, honestly, I don't remember. We went uh, to one restaurant one time. I don't remember what I had, but I do remember it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Because other than that, we stay in the village. Ah, this right. is something else that's very unique in the Paralympics that people don't know. Because the Olympics is so big, the referees do not stay in the village. The yes, referees stay in hotels. I know that. Except for Barcelona. Do you know where the referees stayed in Barcelona? I don't know. On a ship. On a ship? Yeah. They had a cruise ship. They pulled in the port. And referees, they stayed on the cruise ship. So, because they didn't have enough hotels to support all of the guests coming into the city as well as all of the staff. So that was unique. But for the Paralympics, because we don't have as many athletes, we're much smaller than the Olympic Games, there's more housing available. And so we stay in the Olympic Village uh, with the athletes. And the same thing with uh, normally, normally para, uh, para Pan Ams, same. But in Lima, we did not. Lima was the first time we stayed in a hotel and not in the Paralympic Village. Okay. So, the, the next uh, Paralympics are in the Panam, 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 Paralympics, Parapanam, sorry, Parapanam are in uh, Santiago, right? In Chile. See, si, see. Si. Will be. 2023. Santiago. That's correct. Okay. Great. So, we hope to be there. We don't know. We'll see. We don't we'll know. Keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, Joe, it has been a pleasure. Thanks, thanks again for being here. Uh, okay. Very, very thoughtful lessons of, of Paraboli. Thanks a lot. You are a very kind person. Thank uh, you. Uh, well, thanks a lot. I hope, hope you can see the, the coming um, Voli Talks. On Monday, we will have um, Gabriel Salvia, the director of uh, Regional Development Center for FIBB in Argentina. Oh, okay. On on Tuesday we have here the Casey Patterson right okay. here. <laughs> on the Wednesday, uh, let me check my schedule because uh, <laughs> our people. Too on, many. Wednesday, on Wednesday, the Sydney 2000 Olympic gold medalist Dane Blanton would be here. Excellent. Uh, on Thursday, Thursday 23rd, my man. DJ Ruscha, Jeremy Ruscha will be here, and I think uh, I, I, I'm, so sure, I'm sure that we will talk a little about uh, Syrian volleyball. He loves Syrian volleyball. Excellent. And, and Friday, Daniel Scott. Daniel Scott, <laughs> five-time Olympian. What yes, else? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and uh, on Wednesday, 29th, Ron Stahl, another uh, for, director oh, from Texas, from Fort Worth, Texas. Ron, Ron will be here. Yes. One, real quick, one thing. I know you need to quit. No, 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 no. Ron, oh, Ron Stahl was an assistant coach in sitting volleyball at one time for Team USA. Oh, really? Yes, oh, he really? was. I didn't know that. Yeah, so you, so you can throw that out in the middle of your conversation. You can say, uh, Ron, I understand you were an assistant coach with the men sitting volleyball. Joe told team. me. <laughs>
He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. I know him in Long Beach in 20, 2012. He's a great guy. Well, he lived in Dallas, Texas uh, for a I while. Know. And I know. we refereed together in USA Volleyball. Oh, in so, the yeah. Lone Star region, right? Well, that's North Texas region. Um, I'm in the Lone Star region. Okay. But uh, at Opens, uh, we refereed together for many, many years. Okay. I hope uh, one day you can invite me to ref some games. Okay. Actually, you need to talk to Patty Rolf. <laughs> no problem. She invited me already. <laughs> ah, perfect. Sounds good. So, no problem. I'm, okay. I'm good with the boss, so no problem. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> and uh, on the next week, Friday, the 31st, the three-time Olympic gold medalist, Mireya Luis from Cuba. Excellent. You got a great lineup coming up. Congratulations. Oh. Yes, well, I I have had here Karsh Kirai, Doc, Doc Bill, John Kessel, Randy Stoklos, Injun Smith. They oh. are hi hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great guys. Barry Rolf, uh, people from around the world. I, re yeah. I, really, I really enjoy this uh, this project. Uh, Mark Lebedo from Australia, uh, Bill Heinen from Belgium, uh, other people from Argentina, Hugo Conte, Willy Paredes, Karina Rene, referee. Uh, Marcos Milinkovic, the player. Uh, mm. Yeah, great personalities. Excellent. Uh, well, okay. Thank you. That that's, uh, has been, uh, this has been a great time, Joe. Thanks, thanks a lot again for for your for your time, for your patience, because, you know, um, with these technical issues, you never know. <laughs> yes, that's true. But, yeah, but um, I'm very glad that we can make this, this Volley Talks. Me too. Okay. See you soon, Joe. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Adios. Adios. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.